second story. Uh, this is an article I'm just going to kind of read because it's 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 bonkers uh, and it sounds like an onion article. But it is not. It is from Yahoo. And uh, oddly enough, <laughs> I kind of I didn't notice this until right now. But check this out. It's under Yahoo Entertainment. The title of the article is uh, Munger, uh, Charlie Munger, who is uh, uh, vice chairman of, of Berkshire Hathaway and, and you know, a business partner of Warren Buffett. I, did, I, I honestly didn't particularly know who Charles Munger was, but he's one of those people that's kind of hiding in the shadows, you know, um, the, like this is th these these guys are the ones that are really tr turning the wheels. So when you kind of hear their name and you go, "Who?" You, yeah, that's that's the point. That's the point. You're you're not supposed to know who turns the wheels. But uh, this is under. It says it's a Yahoo Finance story, but it's very clearly under the entertainment section. Um, so I don't know if somebody fucked up in, at Yahoo or or what happened. Uh, but I kind of find it entertaining that this article. Is uh, <laughs> it's it's a Yahoo Finance article under Yahoo Entertainment? Like it's just, I I, I find that particularly entertaining. Okay, so this says uh, uh, Munger, a little inequality is good for the economy. Uh, now, I saw this article because I followed Dr. Richard Wolf, and he posts a lot of these like he posts these great articles that kind of you know pop up and disappear, and and people never say a whole lot about it. Um, this is from the end of February, right? February 25th is when this article came out. And I haven't really seen a whole lot of people talk about this. Uh, and when I saw the article, I was kind of like, well, this doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, why would somebody make a statement like that? Uh, and then I read it and I was like, oh yeah, cause you're, cause you're a sociopathic billionaire. That's why, <laughs> like that's, that's, that's why you make a statement like that. So I'll read through the article. It's a it's a quick uh, five minute read, and and you know we'll we'll stop in the middle and and uh, uh, kind of break down some of the things that he says. Uh, so let's go in. <clears throat> Investing icon Charlie Munger, Berkshire Hathaway's vice chairman and Warren Buffett's longtime business partner, says wealth inequality is the inevitable consequence of policies that make a nation grow richer and elevate the poor. So he's saying in order for you to elevate the poor you need to continue making more poor people. <clears throat> like they're a fucking product, like they're a shoe. And again, th this begs the question of like, when you say a nation to grow richer, what are you actually talking about? Because to me, if you want a nation to grow richer, it's the people that need to be taken care of because the people are the ones that really make what a nation is, right? That's that's what a that's what a nation is to me. Uh, so to me, if you want to make a nation richer, you would uplift your poor people. You would figure out a way uh, to decrease the amount of poverty. And this is not just like, well, let's redefine what poverty is, kind of like what Trump did, kind of like what uh, pretty much every president ever fucking has, right? Um, it's what he's talking about is not that. What he's talking about is uh, shareholders. He's talking about uh, Wall Street. He's talking about the banking industry. He's talking about the corporate oligarchs uh, that put money into our election system that uh, essentially control the direction of this country. It's the people that got really fucking pissed off at the GameStop incident. Um and even though a lot of these finance people don't like what the hedge fund managers do with shorts, they still kind of advocate for it. They're still kind of cool with it, right? Uh, so, so this is this is what he continues on to say. I think that to some extent, the complaint about the rich getting richer, as uh, as the as uh, yeah, that's a typo there. Uh, as the result of the COVID panic, I think that's a misplaced concern. Nobody was trying to make the rich richer. Uh, we were trying to save the whole economy under terrible conditions. And I think by and large, we made the most practical decisions that were available to us. Munger said on Wednesday at an annual meeting 
uh, of the shareholders at the Daily Journal Corporation, where he serves as chairman of the board. When asked if the Federal Reserve keeping interest rates low will only exacerbate income inequality, uh, Munger prefaces that it's hard to know exactly what macroeconomic policy is correct because no one will know for sure just how much government intervention is wise and what point the government should stop intervening. The 97-year-old investor added that he doesn't have any great gift at making macroeconomic predictions either. Now, uh, here's the thing. They did make the rich richer, right? They did make the rich richer. They bailed out Wall Street by giving them $6 trillion and more. They gave average citizens a total of $1,800 and now $1,400 to some people, kind of, sort of, maybe, I don't know. Uh, again, no problem for, for that money to go out with the banks. For money to go out to people, even if it's a small pittance amount, even if it's a breadcrumb, you have to go through the grinds. You have to go through the gears of the so-called democracy where they have to vote and the House has to send it to the Senate. The Senate has to vote and then the House votes again and then they'll prove it. And then they'll be like, all right, here's the process of going through it. If you make this much money between this month and this month, and if you stand outside and look at the sun at this exact time, within this period of, uh, of time, it will drop the money into your bank account. But only if you're looking at the sun between the hours of one and two. Don't, if you're looking, if you go beyond two, if it's 201, you're staring at the sun. Forget, forget it. Forget it. Then you have people like Jeff Bezos, um, whose company made $24 billion. And he's made a personal wealth you know, an astronomical amount of personal wealth. And of that, he's paying, what, less than 4% of his taxes on that money? So by and large, a phrase that he used, to them the most practical decision was, let's make, let, let's cut the rich a break because, boy, they've had it rough. Haven't they? Huh? I mean, Charles Charlie Munger might have had to sell one of his Rolls Royces. And now he's only down to 14. So the most practical decision is save the people uh, that have so much that even if they never made a dime for the rest of their lives, they would still not run out of money. But the people that desperately need the financial relief because they've lost their job due to a global pandemic the practical decision there is to tell them to go on an antiquated unemployment system and hope for the pittance that comes down the, down the wire. And then he says, well, I can't really predict what the macroeconomics is going to do when we saw all this shit happen in 08. Of what happens when you bail out the banks? Well, you collapse the housing market. And they get richer because they bet against the housing market. And you increase the amount of homelessness in the streets. And more people go into bankruptcy. And more people lose their jobs. And there's more of this economic hatred that starts building. And then uh, propaganda comes in and says, well, it's the brown person's fault. Oh, well, it's black people stealing your welfare. Uh, the reason why it's so much more difficult is because of immigrants. And that stirs into racism so that you can tie all that back to the economics. So... You don't have a prediction, but the, the reality is history is your predictor. History will predict exactly what will happen. And you guys, again, much like we talked about in the last seg segment, you're doing the same thing again and expecting a different result or pretending that, oh, well, we just don't know where the, what the result is going to be. Oh, my goodness. And then, you know, and then it's the same shit again, and you stir up the same cycle of bullshit all over again. I wouldn't be surprised if, because of this shit in the next you know, in the next election, there is another right-wing populist that runs up against the corporate Democrat. Because the cycle starts all over again, and Charlie Munger is making an excuse for it, saying, well, this is the practical thing to do. We use logic and reason. No, use logic and reason 
based on greed. You didn't use logic and reason based on what is right for a society. You did. You use logic and reason. What's good for your own personal greed and the people that are in your stupid fucking club? Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> let's keep moving. The policies made by the wealthy uh, owners of the financial assets were not a deliberate choice, but instead an accidental byproduct of trying to save the whole civilization. Bullshit, because if you did that, then you would have bailed out the people. You would have taken that $6 trillion and invested it into the 330 million people that live in the United States of America. You would have used census data, you would have used social security numbers, and you would have figured out a way to send a, a monthly reoccurring check of $2,000 to every single fucking American in this country so that they can actually fucking help each other out via the government. If that if that's what <laughs> you wanted to do, you fucking could have. You didn't save civilization. That would have been saving civilization. What you did was make your fucking pants not fit because you put too much money in it, and now there's no belt in the world that'll actually hold your pants up. That's what you did, you 97-year-old fucking walking greed monster. What's more, that it was probably, quote, uh, quote, probably wise that those policies were implemented. Uh, no, they were dumb. Uh, and it wasn't some malevolence of the rich that caused it. It was an accident. And the next time around, uh, uh, why the poor will get rich faster than the rich. That thing, circulate, uh, uh, that thing circulated. Who gets rich faster by class is going to vary over time. And I don't think anybody should be too concerned about it. Don't worry. Don't worry that we got more. Uh, we got richer this time around just by the snap of a finger, just by magic. Don't worry about that, because next time around, you'll get rich. This is the fucking, uh, uh, what is it, dog and pony show that's sold to people all the time to keep them invested in fucking capitalism. When capitalism comes in and kicks your dog in the face, steals your wife away, and burns your house to the ground, they're like, don't worry, the next time the house is going to be built faster. It'll burn down faster, but you'll build it a lot faster. You, this is a learning experience. Look at the character we've given you. You're rich in character. Isn't that more important than being rich to pay your bills, to be alive? But you're rich in character. Think of your headstone. They'll write so many cool things on your head. That's the argument that they fucking sell to people. And people just go, yeah, okay. No, you should look at this article. You should look at all the shit that he's saying and fuck off from Berkshire Hathaway and, and just not fucking invest in these people anymore. There is this weird fetishization. I'm sorry, I don't know if that's the right way to say that word, but people worship the rich. They worship the fucking rich. Like they're some kind of demigods that, that can speak to the almighty economy, that can speak to the almighty dollar. And the only way people like this are going to stop and they're going to realize that all the horseshit they've been putting out into the world is why there are all these problems is if we stop worshipping them like they're fucking golden gods. He proceeded to point out that a prosperous nation requires a free market system. False! Only if you want rich old bastards to tell you that you need a free market system do you need a free market system. If you run an economy through compassion and logic and actually drive logic through compassion, you'll create a better world. You'll create a better life. You'll create people that actually want to do their fucking jobs. And if you have a free market system that's trying to get rich, uh, that's trying to get rich in a way recommended by Adam Smith, which... I doubt he's read. Uh, what happens is that it's a very irritating system because the poverty that causes so much misery is also causing growth that makes everybody get out of poverty. In other words, to some extent, it's a self-correcting system. No, it's not because poverty keeps going up because the, the, the poverty line gets shifted all the time. Poverty gets redefined so that you don't have to help people get out of poverty. Minimum wage is seven twenty five. That roughly equals out to about twelve thousand dollars after taxes. I want someone like Charlie Munger to live on twelve thousand dollars a year, and then see if he's still going to make statements like this. Because I fucking guarantee you, he won't. He won't make statements like this anymore. Oh, this is this is the part. I'm I'm not going to go past the photo because. Uh, 
like the more I read this, the more worked up I get, but I think you guys are getting the idea. Uh, he, he goes on to say that makes the whole thing very awkward. And it's a shame that economic textbooks don't emphasize how much a growing economy needs poverty in order to get out of poverty. If you try and reduce the poverty too much, it's counterproductive. Well, we'll stop getting rich because what you, what people realize is where these people are getting their money from is by stealing the labor of the people they're keeping poor. So in order to get people out of poverty, the, the, the logical thing to do, the non-counterproductive thing to do would be to stop stealing the labor. Pay the people what they're worth. But they won't do that because then their infinite greed isn't met. Whatever fucking void is in their heart that they think an infinite amount of money is going to fill will not be filled. So they need to create misery and poverty. He, I mean, he admits it. He admits it in the last two quotes that, 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 that the system creates poverty, but it's creating poverty to get out of poverty. That's like saying, hey... You've been stabbed in the kidney. Why don't I stab you a couple more times in the kidney and that'll kind of fix everything. The system will kind of correct itself. What if I stab the other kidney now? It'll kind of balance it out. You're having a heart attack? Let's cause another heart attack to stop the first heart attack. And to stop the second heart attack, we'll just do another heart attack. We'll just create a series of heart attacks all the way through. Oh, and this is okay. So, so I want to end. Uh, I want to end because there's a there's a whole another fucking section where he says more insane shit. Um, you know, uh, that's equally fucking infuriating. And I don't know if I, I feel like if I get to the end of the article, like my fucking the, there'll be a vein in my head that just bursts out. Uh, and you know, I don't I don't want to. I I I, I would I would like to watch Civil War with my girlfriend tonight. I would like to watch Captain America: Civil War with <laughs> with my with my best friend and my girlfriend tonight. That's <laughs> so. Um, so he says he added these tough questions, and most people assume there's a simple answer. Yes, there is a simple answer. Stop being a fucking infinitely greedy bastard. Start giving a shit about other human beings other than yourself. You 97 year old walking greed corpse. Okay, uh, <laughs> he says, if we could make the world richer by just raising the minimum wage to $100,000 a second or something, of course we would do that, but we can't. First of all, no one's asking for $100,000 a second except you, motherfucker. That's probably how much money you make. You understand in order to make $24 billion, it would take like 198 million years to fucking make that money on minimum wage. You legitimately can't do it. No one's asking for that kind of money. People are asking for a living wage, just enough money that they can pay their bills, buy food, make sure they have shelter, and not be broke at the end of the month. Not look at their bank account and be like, well, I have $3. Hope nothing falls apart. Hope chaos doesn't come to my fucking doorstep today because I have $3 to live on until my next paycheck. That's not $100,000 a second. To, to make that statement, to say, oh, it's $100,000 a second or something, means you're completely fucking bullshit out of touch. You're, you're just fuck-minded out of touch. Like, you have no sense of what reality most fucking human beings live in. You just don't. So you have no fucking right to be this guru of finances when you don't know what actually is, uh, is, is hurting people. You 97-year-old walking bag of cash that we should burn. You know that, if, if you guys have ever seen The Dark Knight, there's a scene where the Joker is on this huge pile of money and he sets it on fire. That, like, that is Charlie Munger. Charlie Munger is just a walking, giant, burning pile of money. He's, he's like what happens when... All of the sh like, go like the shit from Golgotha meets money. It becomes Charlie Munger, and then it says shit like this. 
He's a fucking lunatic, man. And what's amazing is that we have people in this country that like worship people like this, that think that people like this are correct. And then we wonder why we have callousness and poverty in the world. Stop worshiping these fucking assholes. All right, uh, before I lose my mind and blow out a vocal cord or two, uh, I will look at some comments. Uh, Shane. Shane says billionaires should not exist. We need a maximum wage like Jesse Ventura has been suggesting for years. I, I agree with that, uh, Shane. I think we need a, 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 a maximum wage. We need a cap uh, on... Um, on, on how much somebody can earn. Um, the, worker co-ops do that. Worker co-ops put a cap on, uh, you know, the bosses can uh, only earn X amount of dollars more than their lowest, page, uh, lowest paid employee. I agree with that. Uh, <laughs> Holly's playing a teeny violin. Uh, me too, Holly. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo, you lost a billion dollars. You still have 50 more, asshole. <laughs> Let, let us know when you're down to your last 15 bucks. Hashtag where's the 2000? Yeah, it's four, Yeah, it's the 1400s coming. Uh, and you and again, you have fucking Democratic apologists that come out and be like, I never thought that it was 2000. When he said 2000, I thought 600 plus 1400. That makes you, I'm a good math person. That's how they fuck. And, and it's like, no, you didn't. You fucking thought it was 2000. And now that a Democrat's like, oh, it's actually 1,500, they're like, oh, yeah, that's probably what it is. And they're just kind of going along with whatever the fuck the party wants you to do. The American dream is an illusion. Yeah, you have to be asleep to believe it. Let them live on minimum wage. I would love to see Charlie Munger live on $12,000 a year. I'd love to see what he can do. I bet Warren Buffett wouldn't talk to him anymore. The self-correcting free market and the greed knows no bounds. Yeah, there there is no such thing as a self-correcting free market. It's just not. Uh, ugh. Wasn't expecting you, but shared on Twitter and Facebook's slight poetic license. <laughs> well, I'm glad you joined us, Fred, uh, over on Rockfin. Thank you for joining us. Uh, a little bit of a late, late live stream today, but I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you caught it on Twitter. Uh, cool. Mondragon is a good example of a successful worker co-op. Shane, yes, it is. Uh, that's the one that uh, Dr. Richard Wolff talks about. He uses that as sort of his touchstone example of worker co-ops. Um, and I actually talked about it in the worker co-op video I did. I, I did a whole show about um, you know automation and the future of work and and what I think we need to do, um, you know how to restructure our, our our relationship with work. And I talked about worker co-ops, uh, and Mondragon was the example that I used. Uh, I believe they have a cap at eight times. Uh, so the lowest paid employee um, versus the, you know, the managerial CEOs, board members and stuff. The board members can't make more than eight times that of a lowest paid employee. Um, so if they want to make a hundred bucks an hour, um, I should probably use a, an easier number to do math off the top of my head. Um, they want to, you know, make $64 an hour, then the, 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 the lowest paid employee makes eight an hour. Uh, right. So if they want to make more than that, obviously they're going to have to increase the wage. So, so, and it's a democratic process. People get rotated in and out. So everybody kind of knows how to do everything. The community kind of takes care of itself. Worker co-ops, I, I think are absolutely the way to go and a much better solution than a quote unquote self-correcting free market, which doesn't fucking exist. It just doesn't. If it was a self-correcting free market, then I would at least be somewhat rich. I wouldn't be like, fuck, I don't know how, I hope I can make my car payments this month. I wouldn't be fucking doing that. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. 
and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, um, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. There you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.